it wasn't like we were signing the first world-class player that we had in the team. The team was full of world-class players. It was just, OK, well, he's going to be good. I don't think people realised how good he was going to be. And you could see that he really felt that he was coming somewhere where he wanted to give it his best. He told me, I don't know why you're playing on the wing. You're wasting your time. It'll be great if we can meet again. And um, the rest is history. He just came here, nobody knew him well and in a different position and uh, finally made it in a, as a central striker. It was the summer of 99. There were a lot of rumours around us signing Thierry Henry because if you remember, we had just sold Nicolas and Elka to Real Madrid. So that was kind of the story that was dominating at the time. But it wasn't a massive signing to the world. He was a name. He'd obviously won the World Cup in 98, but he wasn't really a renowned international superstar. There was a lot of stories about him signing. We had such a great team at the time that it wasn't like we were signing this world-class player. It was just, uh, this could be another great player that Arsene brought in at the time. I knew him when I was in Monaco. He was one of my youth team players. The president didn't want to speak um, with Arsenal, I don't know why. But I was very close. Arsenal wanted to buy me and I wanted to move for, for Arsenal, but the, the president, the chairman of Monaco, didn't want to, so I went to, to Juve after, after that. After the game, that Juve game, end of the season, I went back to Paris. And who was on the plane? You can ask him. The boss was on the plane. And that's when I told him I would love to, to join Arsenal. Then I always wanted also to work again with uh, Arsenal. So that's what happened. He was sort of unproven, really, but Arsenal had signed lots of players like Nicolas Anelka, Manuel Petit, Patrick Vieira to a certain extent, who weren't world-class players. But there were so many coming through that I think the expectation was that he was going to be one. But I don't think the fans were massively overexcited about it. I think they were excited, but I think he had a lot to prove when he came in. Even though I arrived here as a world champion, I was nobody, and rightly so. The likes of Patrick Vieira, uh, Emmanuel Petit, and Nicolas Anelka made the club famous in France. Even though the first time I heard about Arsenal Football Club was because of Ian Wright. We held it at Highbury. We brought Thierry down onto the pitch side. Like with all the signings at that time, which we did at Highbury, um, that they were big and you know, there was a lot of people there on the day. I think I just turned up on the day, knew he was signing and, and it was just straight out onto the pitch, a few pitches, very little contact with a lot, lot of other people around on the day and he was whisked away. At the time also, you weren't really too sure about his position as well because he was, he was a wide player, but also you knew that he possibly could play as a centre forward. And that was a lot of the talk around exactly how he would fit into the team and the squad because we had so many good players at that time. You know, you look back at our squad and the, the attack that we had was incredible. But uh, yeah, that was one of the questions that the fans I know had was how Thierry would actually fit into the side. In Monaco, I made him start in a professional team as a central striker. And that was the only game he got as a central striker ever. It was 17 or 17 and a few months. And since then he has always played on the flank. I signed him then because he had the pace, the physical power, the spirit, and I believe the potential to play central striker. He told me, I don't know why you're playing on the, on the wing. And he said, you, you're wasting your time. I remember you as a nine. He was uh, very persistent and he was like, this is your position, stick to it, the way it gets in your mind and, and kind of allow you to be the player that you can be. And it will always focus on your strong point instead of your weak points. I don't know how it happened, but I know that we, we bought Nicholas and Elka for something like 250,000 or 275,000. That was what was reported and sold him for 25 million. And bought Thierry for, I think, 12 and a half, something like that, and then with the remaining money, we built the training ground. So we got Thierry Henry and the Arsenal training ground for Nicholas and Elka. So it's pretty decent business. When I first arrived here all the time, I used to, to read on the, on the newspaper. Yeah, he's the most expensive uh, player for Arsenal and all this kind of thing, you know. But for me, I just wanted to, to you know, to, to show to, for, my, for my partners, for my manager. I, I mean, 
something like uh, I'm in the boss. Um, I wanted and for the fans as well. I wanted to show I, I could play for Arsenal and I could do some really good thing for them. When you look what these players would be worth today, you could not get the checkbook big enough to buy these players. I look back and think that on that day, if you'd have said to me that we were signing the future top goal scorer and an Arsenal legend, it was quite strange actually, but it's so great that, you know, obviously we signed him and the history tells the tale, doesn't it?